Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We've uh, begun putting the pieces together in the Matt James, Rachel Kirkconnell puzzle. It's taken almost a year. They're finally talking about who got back with who, if they would have stayed together. And this week, Matt James speaks about the regrets he has not standing by Rachel during uh, all the issues they came out at the After the Final Rose. This photo was taken from a still at the After the Final Rose when Matt James essentially was like, I need to separate myself from you so you can do the work. He said he felt cowardly looking back on it. We'll get into all of this. Do me a favor. Follow me on Instagram at dneals. For bonus membership-only content, you can go to patreon.com slash Neal. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Double-check. You might not be subscribed. We need every subscriber we can get. Hit that subscribe button. Like this video an odd number of times. Now, as we know, last week, Matt and Rachel were doing a QA and uh, a with uh, discussing their breakup. Uh, one of the questions was, after y'all broke up, did Matt, make, did Matt reach out to you first, or did you reach out to him? And she says that he reached out to her. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play for you um, uh, several minutes of this interview and we can hear what Matt has to say looking back on all of this. They do a good job of summarizing everything. Now, if you want some non-Bachelor related content, I've got the Dave Neal Show in a brand new episode of basically explaining what the heck's going down with Joe Rogan on Spotify, how The Rock distanced himself and now he's being sort of canceled for things he has said. It's uh, Andrew Yang deleted his comments. It, it's, it's a big story. I got a whole 21 minute video. You can go check that out as soon as this video is done. All right, let's have a listen to Matt James on the Carlos Watson show. You can listen to his full interview on the uh, on YouTube, uh, but here's just a clip. I think it was met mostly with like people being excited, but people's expectations started to become real. It's like, congratulations, you know what you have to do now. And I'm like, what do I have to do? I'm only going to say things that I mean and do things that I mean and feel. And I'm going to continue to show you how I feel about you and when I'm out with you as I'm falling in love with you. I'm with you. When did you realize Rachel was the one? At what point? <sighs> it's hard to say without getting in trouble. Um, I think I'm still under contract, but uh, <laughs> you just, you just, I'll say this, like you don't really get to spend a lot of time with people. It's a long process. It's a couple months and there's a bunch of women there that you need to dive into their stories, see what type of baggage they're coming with and like my baggage like there's a bunch of different stuff going on so like it kind of feels like he wants to say it was love at first sight but i don't think he's allowed to say that because you got to trust the process and all these things but he clearly is biting his tongue here like to really get to know somebody in that time is difficult and when i spent time with rachel i didn't feel like i was on a show she wasn't like anybody else there like she just kept it 100 like she wasn't with the whole like hi like like she was just real like it was just in in, in, a, in in a space where there's so much of this like phoniness going on you're just drawn to this like real person and this real conversation and connection and i've fallen even more in love with her these past six eight months because i've learned about so much more that we could have tackled in the show. You know, we live life together. We've gone through ups and downs together. We, we spent so much time together with each other's families. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm glad that we've given ourselves time to let this relationship grow and not rush into something because it's what people want us to do. Talk to me about the controversy. Rachel Kirk Connell, who is competing for Matt James's heart in this season of The Bachelor, is apologizing after photos of her at a plantation themed party resurfaced. Now, let's not get it twisted. This is the greatest Bachelor con controversy of all time. Chris Harrison ended up getting fired for his statements. Uh, really divisive really charged this was it this was the, there was there have been other issues but this was a the first black lead the, uh, so, so a lot of irony a lot a lot a lot happened here you got the the side of cancel culture where people look at into someone's past like Rachel Kirkconnell seeing that you know things went down they're gonna explain it here but this was huge we we talk about so much drama within Bachelor Nation that uh th th that all pales in comparison to this how did you find out about it and did you panic when the stuff was unearthed about Rachel. I didn't panic because I didn't understand the severity of it at the time. You know, Rachel calls me and she's like, hey, um, like these these pictures have come out and I want to give you context to what that was. 
And I understood what she was telling me. I understood the context of those pictures because she gave them to me, you know? And it was hard to comprehend at the time because I know that, I knew that those weren't places that I would have been welcome. I had to take a step back for you to put in that work that you outlined that you needed to do. And that's something you gotta do on your own. And that's why we can't be in a relationship. Now, this moment and the after the final roast when he says we can't be in a relationship, this is where people start speculating, right? You've got the people that say he's breaking up with her, and then you have those that are saying this is all being done as a facade, and he's actually staying with her, but he can't admit that publicly because of all of the people that would disown him, which might be true. Now, we know that I mean, at least I know this is uh, such a such a once in a lifetime situation that I'm sure in most cases none of us could understand what how to navigate that. He's got someone he loves, but then he's got his identity at risk because I'm sure he's getting thousands of messages from people saying like, you know, you can't you can't possibly do this, and that's kind of play with you because he he meets Rachel at Nema Nemacolin Resorts in Pennsylvania, and um, I'm sure there's a lot of doubt coming in. Like, did I really love her? Do I really like what? There's so much gasoline on this fire. You don't even know where it all started. Matt, if you had to do it all over again, would you have taken time away from the relationship? Would you have put it on pause? Was that the right thing to do? Or if you could Great talk question. to your younger self, would you say, hey, no, don't step away from it. She's the right woman. You're just going to have to work through it. I probably would have tried to work through it. You know, I uh, I don't think that was the best thing for her. You know, I uh, it was I felt kind of cowardly looking back on it. Like, you know, in her toughest times, like I'm like not there by her side, like helping her through it, especially as a black man who's chosen this woman over everyone else who's there. Um, it's like, you didn't have strong enough convictions to stick with her through everything that she's going through. And you know, it's something that I've talked to her about and I've apologized for. All right, he is apologizing. Of course, we, we look at this photo. I mean, uh, Rachel was, she was in rough shape. But now it, it comes down to, you know, people having that sort of debate. Do we feel bad for Rachel when she caused all of this? And we talk about the ignorance of growing up in all different parts of the country, not necessarily being educated on the history, not really knowing what an antebellum party was. I mean, I can freely admit that I didn't know what antebellum South was. I can freely admit that. Did we learn about that in public school in Rhode Island? Maybe, maybe we did. Did it stick in my brain? Absolutely not. So far removed. So I would never look at those plantation themed photos and understand the severity of what part of the world, what was happening in our country when that was going down. That's why these conversations are good to have. A lot of us have learned this. And that's why people have talked about council versus cancel, because in talking about these things, it's it's brought to light what some of you guys might have already known what the Antebellum South represented, the uh, you know, the the Confederacy and what that represented. I mean, it's still taught in many states that it was not about slavery, but it was about states' freedoms. This is stuff that's still still taught in 2022. So education's key. Shining light on dark darkness is the greatest disinfectant, but we're just not there. And I think it's important to admit that, that, that culturally we're just not there where everyone can, can know things, uh, but we can have the conversations that can lead to that, which I think ended up happening with the two of them. But clearly there was so much judgment. Now, we can't forget that Matt James has done um, this podcast. He's done a, a, bit, a, a bunch of uh, cryptocurrency podcasts. Um, he hasn't really uh, shared this story on Bachelor Podcasts. Whether or not that's, I'm sure it is a conscious choice, but um, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be unfair to think that Matt James' storyline was completely botched by The Bachelor. And now you might say, listen, The Bachelor wasn't responsible for the photo surfacing of Rachel, and that's true. But the, what The Bachelor was responsible for was not letting Rachel address and apologize for that, waiting for the moment in the after the final rose so that they could profit off of racial tension. That's essentially what was happening. By waiting for it to air on their time, they were profiting off of that. And in fact, they ended up probably losing a lot of money. They paid uh, Chris Harrison $8 million to step down as host because he was there protecting the company. And of course, he completely botched that. So one thing led to another and the show 
flew a little too close to the sun and we know how that goes. And that's kind of what they're known for here is saying, oh, it'll all come out in the storyline. Well, they could have immediately had Rachel address this in a long form podcast, talk to people and had all these things happen. And it would have at least limited the spread of the wildfire of people wondering, where does Rachel stand? What does Rachel think about? And finally, after maybe a month or so, I mean, we'd have to look back at the receipts, but finally Rachel said, enough's enough. She gave an eight-minute apology on Instagram TV, which might stand as one of the best apologies we've seen within Bachelor Nation. She didn't use growing up in Forsyth County, Georgia as an excuse. She didn't use ignorance as an excuse. She pledged to do better. Uh, So let's uh, let's finish off here and see what uh, Matt James has to say. Oh, then he goes to crypto. Okay, so we don't need to talk about that. All right, so that pretty much wraps up what what he gave in that interview, which is fascinating stuff. Now, a lot of people have hypothesized on the timeline of when they did break up, which by the way, I do believe they did break up. Now, people don't know if, was it producer driven? Did the producers want him to break up? Or were they just trying to protect him from all of the people online and say, hey, take a step back, take a month off. Just say you're going on a break for a month. You can't see each other every day anyway. Take a break, blah, blah, blah. We don't really know how that all went down, but um, you know, we'll read some of your comments. He's a step away from admitting producers told him to dump her for his image. That's a big one. Um, I actually agree because didn't Reality Steve say that in private, Matt was telling Rachel how much he loved her and wanted her back? If he had no issue with her racism, he should have said that instead of pretending to be upset because that's what the public wanted. That's just fake. If he knew he wanted to be with her, he should have just said that. Well, I think, like I say, we can walk and chew gum at the same times. And again, I can't speak for somebody else, but I think this really did affect Matt. But I think as a guy who's, this is his first time stepping out as a celebrity, really, I think he was surprised at people judging him. You know, when you're not a celebrity, you can just make judgments, you can forgive people. But when you're known to others, it's it's probably harder to forgive people because everyone's judging you for giving someone else grace in that situation. We can't possibly know what Matt James was going through here in a situation where he opened himself up. I think for the first time saying he was for his first time being in love and then finding out that there's a whole nation of people that are upset with Rachel's actions, rightfully so. But I think we need to appreciate that in the end, while he might have broken up and they might have separated in the end, he's the one who reached out to her. We showed that in this video the other day and tried to make right from the situation. So while it might have been tough to navigate in on live TV, it seems like they got to the right decisions. Now, what people currently think about this is a whole nother story. There's a Reddit thread about people believing that Rachel hasn't um, done the work that she pledged to do. And it's one of those things. If you do all of the work, you know, that's the key word, the work, and you share it on social media, you're performative. If you don't share it, we don't see that she's done the work. She's had interviews with people and donated her time and works with Matt's charity and so many different things that are happening that I don't feel like I'm in the place to judge her for whatever work she does in her relationship. I wish her well and Matt James as well. And that's all we can really do at this point is try to spread love moving forward. I'm looking forward. No, uh, no, no rear view mirror here, folks. That's, that's all we can do, right? I think we, I think we'd be driven nuts if we, if we tried to, um, you know, uh, be judge and jury for what people have done in the past and where they come from. It's about having knowledge today and taking those steps in the right direction. That's where I uh, stand. That's my core belief. I would love to know what you guys think. We've got live streams happening today at 7 p.m. East Coast, uh, 4 p.m. West Coast, and then 10 p.m. East Coast, 7 p.m. West Coast. That's before and after tonight's live stream, uh, tonight's episode, week five of The Bachelor. And if you want extra bonus content, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And I'm on Instagram at Neals. We'll see you all in a little bit. Bye, everybody.